Just to be honest, I never expected to be pregnant in a pandemic. When is your due date? Any tips for dealing with the morning sickness? Do you pay for help? Have a cleaner or any nanny? This was a pregnancy planned. Did you try or did the Lord pull a fast one? Hey, it's Bibiana. So for today's video, I'm doing a pregnancy Q&A. As we recently announced that we are expecting and you guys have been so sweet with all the comments and messages and encouragement and prayers. And you know, they are truly appreciated. I guess more so at a time like this that we find ourselves in. Before I get into the q and I just want to stop here and see how you are all doing. Obviously the previous videos were recorded quite a few weeks ago and things have progressed a lot more than any of us expected. I know this has affected many of you in different ways and it truly is heartbreaking hearing all the news of how this is affecting lives. So I want you to know I'm here for you. This channel was never about just me or my family. I always wanted to be a community. So there's always space for you to leave a comment, a prayer request down below. And you know, it is a community. A lot of us are believers here, hopefully encouraging each other on this journey of life. And as I bring you along on my own experiences, I want you to know I'm here for you as well. Even some of these questions I've got address that and want to know how I'm feeling knowing that I'm pregnant now and in the times that we find ourselves in. So I will bring that up as well because to be honest I never expected to be pregnant in a pandemic but like I said I will address that towards the end because I want this video to be more positive, very honest but also very informative as well because I know many of you are on different stages of your motherhood journey. So I put out one of those ask me any things over on my Instagram and I got quite a few questions so I'm gonna work through those. Do you hope for a boy or girl? Quite a few questions like that and then a few similar comments to this one which is I hope Olivia gets her baby sister. Oh gosh excuse me guys um, another symptom I've been having quite a lot is heartburn so excuse me if I just need a little break here and there it's um, really carried itself on even until the second trimester honestly I don't mind what gender our baby is I'm just happy to have a healthy baby I feel very fortunate we really have at least one of each and yes it would be nice I'm not gonna lie to have another girl just even out the household but I really don't mind we just looking forward to a healthy baby now, if I then speak for Olivia, then she's made her view very clear that she would like a baby sister. And she's had this desire in when I was expecting Idawu, Caleb, and she was so convinced he would be a girl. To be honest, I was convinced as well, but it's not like I was desiring a girl, but she really wanted a girl, even to the point where we did the gender reveal, and we found out it was a boy, she was not happy. It literally took her a few days. She kept on saying, maybe they're wrong. We should go back and check. But as soon as he came home, like Olivia and her brother have been like this. Like she's really, really close to her twin brother, but it was just so easy for them all to bond. Obviously the boys bonded quite easily, but I was really surprised how close and protective Olivia is of her little brother. And I know she couldn't be happier to have a little brother. But now with this pregnancy, she's made it clear again. I think she's forgotten because she was two years old then, a very vocal two year old. And now she's a bit older, she's still very similar and saying that she really, really wants a girl. And this one is probably less of a demand, you know, those triumphant two stages. It was more like, a girl, it better be a girl, mommy. Now she's just like, please, mommy, please, can you just make sure it's a girl? I'm like, I really have no control over this. It's really up to God. Maybe in a way I hope Olivia gets her girl too, but you know, we'll be happy either way. So I keep on saying we, Obviously Sam's not here, but what I will do is see if I can pop in a clip of me asking him that question as well, just to see what his response is to whether or not he would like a boy or a girl. Hello love. What's up? I have a question for you from my Q&A video, pregnancy video. I okay. thought you could chip in and Shoot. give some insight. They want to know, do we want a boy or a girl? Or do you want, let me find out your response. I've shared mine. Do I want a boy or a girl? Well, the most important thing, obviously, we want is a healthy baby. Um, and Sorry, sweetheart. Good boy. <laughs> and I'm. All right, you go outside, sweetheart. Good boy. Bye. <laughs> and I really don't mind. I really don't mind. But ideally, I would like a cute little baby girl. Really, you want a girl? I've got my two bodyguards already, so. I want a baby girl. Just a, a team for Olivia. Thank <laughs> Thanks, love. Yeah. Okay, so a very popular question is how many weeks are you? And another one I've been asked quite a few times is when is your due date? 
So I'm going to start by saying that on this channel I'm happy to share my experiences, my family experience, my motherhood, marriage, everything, but I do not actually share every detail of my life. But me and my husband have very clear boundaries of what we share and what we don't share. We actually have like a little mission statement on this channel as well that we keep and it just helps us be accountable to our goals for this channel, our vision for it and the boundaries that we set. And being a family channel we have to be careful for safety for our children for ourselves as well and we take all that into consideration because you know it's not the most normal thing that everybody kind of shares and even though this is mainly my channel i do respect my husband in his input and always share with him what i'm gonna put out there and get his feedback and he's super super supportive and his i guess his boundaries very much align with mine which i'm very grateful that he's even happy for us to share our lives on this channel so with that being said, we do obviously have things that we will not show. Everybody doesn't show every detail of their lives. So I will tell you what month I'm due. And I've mentioned it before on Instagram and given some weekly updates on my stories as well. So be sure to follow me on there, probably for more real-time information. Because coming on YouTube, it takes a while for me to edit and everything and get it up. But I'm due in September this year. Now, in terms of sharing my exact due date... I will not be sharing that and I say that not in like a stuck up way or anything it's just a boundary that we have because I have to see if it aligns with the vision the God's vision for this channel and the purpose and the mission behind this channel I know a lot of other influencers out on there put maybe the hospital they're due and the time that they're due and really give you guys all the details so you know exactly when baby's dropping and that's just not my intention on this channel. I'm not a celebrity, I'm not looking for that. I just want to share my journey and hopefully give some realistic time scales as to what's going on. So if you're on that journey as well, or you plan to be, it can be informative, it can be helpful. So at the time of this recording, I'm currently 15 weeks. I will try and give a realistic weekly update when I film, because if I'm gonna show a bump or anything, I want to be honest. So I thought I'd do a little bump update so you can see where I am right now. Obviously, I'm showing a lot earlier than I have in previous pregnancies, and that's perfectly normal. You do show sooner the more pregnancies that you have. But there we go. <laughs> the reason why I didn't mention my weeks in the first video when we did the announcement, as I said, we hadn't even had the scan yet. And even that was a bit of a push for me because previous pregnancies, and then announced Caleb till I was well into the second trimester. And then my first pregnancy with the twins, I wasn't even on social media then apart from, you know, a small Facebook page. And even then, I announced my pregnancy when I gave birth. So I've come a long way, but that's all been maybe confidence, but just more so with me knowing what I want to share, what is the purpose of me sharing it. And that's really what it always comes down to. And I have actually been filming weekly update videos as well. It's just taken me a lot of time to get around to editing them, but those are coming out soon. I want that to be very informative for other pregnant ladies who can really just get an idea of what's going on and what to expect from someone who's actually living that experience each week. Because I know for myself, that's what I really wanted when I was pregnant. And I didn't see much of that out there. And I didn't see many people like me doing that. I've been doing like a pregnancy journal as well. So... I'll probably share that at a later date where I really have specific prayer points over each week of pregnancy that just really helped me and really just helped me enjoy each week because it flies by so quickly and really be intentional about each week of pregnancy. So I'm excited to share that with you soon. All right, so these next questions, pretty much very similar, which is, was the pregnancy planned? Did you try or did the Lord pull a fast one? Um, did you plan for this fourth pregnancy? And I put a poll up after I did the announcement. It just pretty much went like, were you guys expecting this or were you shocked when you heard the announcement? And it was such a disproportionately high number of people who was literally like, I never experienced it. Like, people were really surprised. I've never been really pushy that I never want children again. Many of you know I've mentioned before it would be nice maybe to adopt in the future when my mind can see clearly past these younger days. Fair enough, when I was a lot younger, I wanted five children before having kids. You know how we are with throwing out numbers before we actually live it. Once I had the twins, the first few weeks, I was like, I'm done, done. I want my tubes tied. But after that, I was like, okay, we can have three. My husband, when we got married, he had always said he wanted four. But again, when we had the twins, it was just like, let's just go for three and we're good. And um, 
he definitely made it clear afterwards that, you know, we should try again, it, you know, to have four. And I agree, you know, we got to a good place where we're comfortable. A lot of, you know, great things that happened with work and with everything like that. And we just felt in a good position to try for another one, especially if we just wanted to just live this experience while they're all still young, because it's not easy. And we just figured if we're going to do it, might as well do it now and not wait till, you know, they're a lot older. Um, unfortunately things didn't work out. If I say on these videos I'm not sharing every detail just because of our boundaries and maybe just comfort level of what I feel like sharing now. But we did try earlier on for a fourth child and it wasn't successful. Um, you can take that how you can but I don't feel comfortable now going into too much detail and um, it was a quite a painful experience because I've been very fortunate and now I definitely saw the true blessing of how easy it was to conceive the twins and how easy it was to conceive in my second pregnancy and then to try again and things go very wrong was very painful and I guess sort of a sign that maybe we weren't meant to have another child. We just kind of closed the book on it and I guess maybe that responds to the comment where it said did God pull a fast one? Um, he did. I think it's interesting because that verse just kept on coming to my head when we found out we were pregnant again, that we can plan our life, we can plan every single step and I'll admit each pregnancy has been planned and the one we tried before this one was planned to the T, I was like ovulation check, I'm going to give birth this day and then the kids will be this age gap and once that door we felt was closed and we just carried on as normal, um, we make our plans and the Lord directs our steps and he just he decided when he opened and closed the womb and this is the time he decided to open it and we were very surprised but we couldn't be happier. What is your ideal number of children and baby numbers and will you have more kids? So right now ideal number is four. My husband and I are very happy to finish off our journey with four children. I won't say 100% but I'm really at the stage now where I know the Lord can do his own thing but I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we are ending this season of pregnancy this year. We have discussed maybe adoption in the future but I think realistically until we've had this child and know where we're at then we can't make that decision fully yet um, but it's still definitely something that's always been in my heart on maybe in fostering in the future but in terms of birthing any more kids after this one um, it's really not on the cards and I'm I can not even say 100% sure because we don't know what happened in the future but I'm 99.9% .9 sure this is our last pregnancy. Any tips for dealing with the morning sickness? My main tips were just having small regular meals rather than having a big meal especially because I found that I was vomiting quite easily especially when I had larger meals. I tend to eat colder meals because the smell just put me off so much. I would also have things that weren't very strong in smell, very plain food helped as well. Um, another thing that actually helped on the days I could do it was working out and this is no pressure for anyone to work out, I know it's very difficult in the first trimester, there were definitely days where I was like nah, not today, but on the days I did work out I definitely felt so much better, so much more energy and I felt the nausea and the morning sickness wasn't as bad. It will have the nausea now but not so much the actual vomiting. So I actually got diagnosed with HG, I'll list the long form down below which is like a severe morning sickness. And the thing is I never really had it in my first pregnancy, tiny bit in my second pregnancy but nothing like what it compared to in this pregnancy. Fortunately it didn't get the stage of being transmitted to hospital, it got this close. The doctor put me on some medication. I will put down the one I was on below. I'm not advocating medication but definitely if your doctor prescribes it. I was trying to do the natural route and I think now with just the nausea I'm focusing more on the natural route which is things like ginger I feel has really helped with the nausea. You always wanted a big family. So I guess going from three to four makes us quite a big family but even though some would say even three is quite a large family so in that sense even when we had three that was always my desire to have a big family. My husband comes from a family of four so he's one of four siblings, my dad is one of five, my mum is one of four, I'm one of three so we always knew we'd definitely hit at least three. Both of us were definitely in agreement with that before we got married. I've never been someone who just wanted one child or two children, but at the same time not someone who wants like 10 children. I know we, we're hitting our limit, I guess. This is definitely a good number for us and I'm excited because I know 
it's going to be just an amazing experience as they grow up together and I've always liked the experience of knowing that you kind of have brothers and sisters, at least have more than one sibling. So I've enjoyed it and I know from my experience a lot of others have. Do you pay for help, have a cleaner or any nanny or anything like that? We do not have a cleaner, we do not have a nanny, we do not have any hired help. Now, that is something I actually am looking into at the moment. Probably the worst time to be looking for right now. I have had previous help with au pairs before. We've had the odd cleaner, but I'm just kind of person when the cleaning comes, I clean again. So I just kind of scrapped that idea. Ironically, when we found out we were expecting number four, which like I said was a little bit of a surprise, we were making some provision because I was still going to be working. Sam was working. Obviously, things are now been tossed up in the air with COVID-19 and we're looking down the route of things like repairs and I've done videos before about the importance of having a village. Now with my family situation, thankfully I have my parents and um, Sam's parents are not in the country but I have my own parents who are but they work full time. Because of that and the fact that we work we have to look into hide help just to make things work. Um, with three children there's a lot to juggle with school runs and clubs and everything and just making sure things run smoothly. You know I'm honest about that and when we do go down that road I'd love to you know share a bit of that journey with you because um, I know it's not something I see too often but yeah that's definitely something we're looking into after all this clear because ironically enough we're looking into an au pair type of situation and obviously now all the borders are closed so we can't do anything like that but we had a few options um which just got derailed last minute but with everything that's happened um it's kind of thrown a complete span in the works but i'm not fearful at all we've coped with our three children with no help before it was just something i was looking into but the kids are aged now that they're really helpful and when i think about it by the time baby comes the twins will be six almost seven Caleb will be four and they are so helpful now and we're coping just fine with no help so I'm not anticipating it will be too much of a challenge as we shift um, and add a new addition to the family I know it will have its challenges obviously but we're prepared Sam is so helpful we work really well as a team so I'm not too worried but it's definitely something I'm keeping my eye out on I think it's definitely very important to have like a village mentality especially as I will start working from home more and trying to build a business from home that's sustainable um it's important that I make sure that you know my house is kind of in order I'm not very keen on sending my children to nursery when they're very young and that's just a personal choice and just trying to balance it with work which my other job which I can't do in the home is then just working outside the home. I say you just have to do what works for you. Have you been getting any stretch marks with this pregnancy? Now I already had stretch marks before so I don't anticipate me getting any more. Obviously my first pregnancy was twins. Definitely the people who had twins did not get any stretch marks. But I had very large twins who I carried pretty much to term. I had 16 pounds of baby and I do make that very clear. When you have two babies who are full size, Noah was almost 9 pounds, Liv was pretty much hitting 8 pounds. So combined it was 16 pounds of baby plus 2 placentas. It's very rare so carrying that big I wouldn't actually get stretch marks. You know I did a lot of work to try and lighten them and I've done that afterwards with things like I've got it on me is um, any kind of Palmer's products. This is definitely one of my favourite ones which is like a tummy butter and I've been using that now. And I've got another one as well and this one I use mainly around my boobs and my hips and my bum and everything because I do find I can get stretch marks there as well. And these two work really well just to, like I said, just make sure they don't go any darker than they are already and just keep them nice and smooth as my body stretches again. But I will link these down below because I feel these ones work really, really well. Do you suffer from any other symptoms in the first trimester apart from the morning sickness? So the main thing I've had and I'm still having now is nosebleeds <laughs> and I kind of have them with every pregnancy. Um, thankfully I'm used to it now and I kind of know when it's coming on but it can be something that can freak out my husband sometimes but um, and the kids too so I know it's coming. But so that's been happening quite a bit and I have anemia so I have regular blood tests because I naturally get very anemic during pregnancy which I know a lot of women do but I feel they said mine is quite an extreme case so I am taking pregnant care at the moment so I'm currently taking this multivitamin so the box is a bit ruined 
So I'll link this one down below. So this is Pregnant Care Plus with Hattie Omega 3 as well. And I just felt that was really important because you can't go wrong with knowing that they get the brain and eye development as well. So this is really important for me to take in all my pregnancies, not just the regular pregnant care, which works well as well. But if you can invest a little bit more in something like this, I think it's just really important. So that's the one I've been using. And this has iron in it already, but after seeing my doctors, they said I really need to up the iron. So they gave me um, these iron supplements. So these ones you get from the pharmacy, I'll link them down below. But if you know much about taking iron supplements, um, you might know some of the side effects. It might be a bit TMI, but constipation is one of them. And it's doesn't feel great. I signed the process of ordering another supplement which is called Blood Builder. I've heard quite a few good things about it. They still get your iron but you don't have the side effects so I'm excited to try that out. It is more on the pricey side but I'll leave that below if you're interested if you are finding that this is giving you like some horrendous side effects. Oh okay sorry it's looking a little bit different now on the screen. It's because I switched on my room lights because the sun was going down I had to pop out mum life but I'm going to finish this Q&A we're almost there so I'm going to wrap it up just got a few more questions this one is how did the children respond they were just so excited I know you've seen how Sam responded how I responded how my parents responded finding out um, I'm not sure if I'll part of the video of the kids you know like I said we don't put everything out there even though I did film it some things we just keep very sweet memories but it's a very sweet moment the twins were just over the moon dancing jumping and then um, I think Caleb just started dancing and jumping at the same time when they did. In fact, I didn't have a bump. I mean, Caleb, our youngest, he's three, was just a bit confused. And so this one's like, you can be a big brother. And he's like, okay. And we're like, baby. And he's like, no, but I'm the baby. Because we've kind of just kept on calling him the baby of the family. Now that my bump's a little bigger, I'll hear him just go, mommy, baby, baby, baby in your belly. I'm like, baby, been there for weeks. Just He's just seen now. <laughs> so it's really sweet now because he's really like, going on to the fact that there's a little berber growing in there and the other thing as well is we usually call Caleb like the baby of the family so I'll just be like oh my baby to him and he'll be like I'm, I'm not a baby that's a baby the one in my belly's a baby I'm a big boy and it's just so funny now he's gradually stepping into the role and you know knowing he's going to be a big brother and um that's just exciting time. I'm nervous about this pregnancy and the other one way to talk about how I'm preparing mentally. So I'm just gonna group all those questions together. So I said in the previous vlogs there was genuine excitement and there still is. I was very excited, especially after, you know, the fact this journey didn't go smoothly initially, our pregnancy journey. So finding out I was pregnant was a huge surprise, but also a lot of excitement and I carried that forward for you know the vlogs that you've seen and then maybe up until recently my sh mood has shifted slightly especially with the updates with COVID-19 and how things change quite rapidly and if from the UK they have released a lot of new legislation where they've said some of the people who are in the high risk group. Um, I don't want to talk too much about this only because I'm just hoping that this video will benefit people in the future as well and COVID-19 will be long behind us but for now, and many of you who might be pregnant now as well might be feeling this too, and um, hopefully this can provide you some encouragement knowing you're not alone. As much as I'm smiling and I'm happy, I've gone through bouts of, I would say, real anxiety over this. They've kind of pointed out, as a pregnant lady, I am in the same high-risk group and should follow similar guidelines to those who are put in the over 70s and immunocompromised. So that can be a bit of a worry. So we kind of thought there was no research to say that pregnant women are at more risk than a non-pregnant lady. So things like that is probably weighs more heavy on my heart. And actually I'm not someone who's very nervous about pregnancy. Um, I've never really been someone who's overly anxious. Yes, we have our little waves here and there hormonally, but you know, I've always been someone who really is just confident. But when things outside of your control are happening and the news is just there in your face constantly, um, that kind of stuff can be a little daunting. And there's been a lot of changes I've had to make recently, even with my working situation and everything because of this updates with this virus and how, you know, I have to be careful as someone working in healthcare profession where there is no provision for me to work from home and there is no provision for me to work at safe social distance. I have to counter the risk seeing as I'm already potentially high risk being pregnant. Um, so there's been a lot of big decisions to make with my dental, dentistry work working outside the home 
and that has weighed heavy on my heart as well because I've always worked through all my pregnancies and um, even with the twins I was literally at work till like the week I gave birth um because I've just always been someone who pretty much carried pregnancy quite well and then going back to work afterwards so to think that I'm barely into my second trimester and I potentially have to leave my profession for a period of time because of what's going on just makes me not anxious to leave my job just anxious for what could happen next because things have been shifting so quickly I take over a lot of anxiety about you know pregnancy if someone touches you or coughs near you with all this virus going around I know I have to be extra careful and you just think should I go for my antenatal appointment It'd be a bit scary going to hospital and see what's going on so yeah there's a lot going on and it's mainly because of what's happening in the climate now rather than it being anything to do with just me being pregnant under normal circumstances I feel um so that's the only thing I guess that's the main thing that's going on I had no real fear initially when I found out I was pregnant so I know a lot of any of the anxiety or the worry that's going on now is literally because of this COVID-19 situation that we find ourselves in so the question about how I'm preparing myself mentally it's kind of the same way I prepare myself mentally in other situations where I find myself going down the line of anxiety and fear especially when there's no kind of real tangible reason why I should be worried like my scans have been going well my health checks are going well it's just a case of what I'm hearing around me and the what ifs so I then realized you know I've kind of exchanged my faith for fear and so preparing mentally for me is just making sure I'm intentionally spending time with God, intentionally spending time in prayer before I hear any of the news going on and even before I hear other pregnant ladies telling me their horror stories of pregnancy or birth or having another child or anything like that because even outside this news there's just the general anxiety that can go with any kind of pregnancy and I know a lot of you are feeling it too who've messaged me just saying you know who've gone through miscarriages too just shared with me your kind of fear over that as well so again you're probably having a healthy pregnancy now but you've got that what if what could happen what if it happens again and so something that's really helped me and I plan on doing like a pregnancy must have videos because there's so many things I recommend like practically and on a spiritual level as well one of them is a very popular book and you might have seen it make an appearance in my birth vlog because I was literally reading it on the day I gave birth to Caleb and that is this one which is Supernatural Childbirth and I'll link it down below it's quite a popular one and I've just been going through the affirmations and the praise in it again funny because I've read this through every single pregnancy and it just never gets old and it's kind of sad because I haven't really found another book like it at the moment I'm also working on a pregnancy journal so that's something I've been writing every week where I go over specific prayer points over each and every week of pregnancy and just even that journaling process has really helped me I feel I haven't seen that much out there and a lot of you have asked me where I got the pregnancy journal from who's seen it make a bit of show on my stories and I'll be like no this is something I've made myself if that's something you're interested in definitely let me know I could probably make a separate video or some kind of resource to show what I'm doing extra in terms of just spiritually mentally preparing myself for this pregnancy and that journal's really helped because it helps me be accountable and um, intentional about each and every single week of pregnancy and what's going on and just being really aware and I really feel a greater sense of connection with my baby sense of peace as I've done that as well okay that is it for today's video pregnancy q and I really have enjoyed bringing you up to date and just sharing with you what's going on I really hope you like it too if you have any other questions feel free to leave them down below I do read all of them or any comments as well I just don't want to make this video too long also this channel is now not going to be like all pregnancy and baby related and I do have other exciting different content and types of videos coming up so be sure to stay tuned subscribe notifications on and um yeah just really hope you have a great rest of the day great rest of the week stay safe god bless and i will see you in my next video bye thanks for watching